with the Snowflake scripting, there's a block that we can have inside of our, our scripting blocks, which is the exception. It's the exception handling area. Each block can have its own exception handler. So in again, as we showed um, you know, the last couple of months, we can have, you know, with Snowflake scripting, we can have lots of blocks. Um, and inside of those blocks, it can run lots of different, uh, a lot of code. And that's all considered in the, in the Snowflake scripting, that's all considered basically one, one statement, one block. And each of those blocks can have their own exception handlers. So the exception handlers currently support statement errors. They support expression errors and other the and, and you'll see an example of that in a moment, which will allow us to handle custom exceptions. But the custom exceptions, the one thing that we need to know there, and I'll show you some examples, they have to be triggered by the raise command. So we actually have to, if we've got a custom exception that we want to look for, like for example, in the in the scripting that we're going to look at here in a little bit, um, in our demo, one of the things we want to look at is we want to get the classification for tables but we want to catch if we there's a table in the schema that we don't have access to. Uh, we don't want it just to fail. We want it to catch that to handle that exception. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll create a custom exception and then we're going to raise that error, but, but we have to watch for that. So Snowflake supports no more than one exception handler per block. However, the handlers can catch more than one type of exception by having more than one when clause. So we can catch, uh, if we had 15 different um, custom exceptions, we could have 15 different uh, when clauses in there, one for each of those, plus one for the statement error, one for the expression error, and one for the other, which is going to catch anything else that, that isn't specifically defined in there. The exception handler, this is very, very important. The exception um, handler block must be at the end of your block of code, your begin end. It must be at the end of that block uh, because any uh, statements after that exception handler uh, are not going to be executed. Once it gets to the exception handler, um, they're, they're not going to be executed. The next note that we've got here is an exception handler can handle a specified exception only if that specified exception is in scope. So this is one of the things, very key, very important. That exception has got to be in scope of where we're at which is why that we support the exception block in, in multiple blocks. So each one of those can have their own block. Um, so if we have a certain procedure and it's, it's intending to return a value, it should return a value from each possible path, even our exception uh, handler. So every when clause in our exception handler should be returning a value if we've got a certain procedure that's expecting to return a value, otherwise we're gonna have issues there. Um, and if we want to do the error handling in a loop, we must create a block, a begin and end inside of the loop uh, to handle the, the, um, the error handling. Hey, folks, thanks for checking out this cut from our broadcast. To see the full show, click on the link in the video description. Also, check out our learning center, which has white papers, events, live streams, and short explainer videos on a wide range of data management topics. And of course, if you like our content, please share it on LinkedIn. That really means a lot to us. Thanks again for checking us out, and we hope to see you in our next broadcast.